This lecture is a continuation of the anatomy of the heart and we're going to start uh, with the PowerPoint on page 7 with this particular slide. So you can see a couple of things here. We were talking about the right atria and here is a real heart that's been opened up and we're looking into the right atria. Um, the first thing you can see are the pectinate muscles. Uh, the pectinate muscles are actually made of cardiac muscle cells, they're myocardium, but it's where the muscle fibers have a kind of funny ridged pattern to them. You can see them right here. It almost looks like they've been raked with a comb, which is exactly what the word pectin means. It means comb, and so that's why they name these muscles the pectinate muscles. These can be found in both atria. You'll notice that other parts of the atria have a very smooth lining to them. Some other things you'll see are the is the fossa ovalis. Fossa means depression. Remember it's a shallow depression. Ovalis means oval. So this means a shallow oval uh, shaped depression. This is an area where there used to be an opening between the right and left atrium, atria and that was called the foramen ovale. So this was in the fetus during development. The lungs are not functioning. So there is an opening between the right and left atria. Then as the fetus develops, the opening closes and you're left with this shallow depression called the fossa ovalis. This is only found in the right atrium. You'll also find in the right atrium the opening of the coronary sinus right here, just inferior to the opening of the inferior vena cava. So entering the right atrium are three blood vessels. First is the superior vena cava. And this is returning all the blood from tissues superior to the diaphragm. Then there's the inferior vena cava, which is returning blood from tissues inferior to the diaphragm. And lastly is the coronary sinus, which is draining blood from the myocardium of the heart itself. So all this blood entering the superior, inferior, vena cava, and coronary sinus is dumping into the right atrium. Again, this is low oxygenated blood, and it has a high CO2 level. There are four vessels that enter the left atrium, and these are called the pulmonary veins. Since these have re just returned from the lungs, they tend to have a high oxygen level and a low level of carbon dioxide. This is an anterior view of the heart, and you can see a couple of interesting things here. First of all, the bottom heart where, where you have a pointy area is called the apex. This whole top region of the heart is called the base. You can see that this part, this region of the heart all in here is actually made up of the ventricles. And so the ventricles make up the bulk of the mass of the heart. You can see these structures called oracles on the outside. Oracle means little ear, and that's because they're flaps that kind of look like little ears. But underneath the oracles are the atria, and it's believed that the oracles actually increase the volume of the atria. Some other things that you'll see are you'll notice that the veins <coughs> are colored blue for the most part. So on models and in the cat, they actually color the veins blue. The veins don't, aren't really blue inside a human. The reason they're coloring them blue is because they have low oxygen. So actually blue actually means low oxygen content. If you see a red blood vessel, it indicates high oxygen content. So one of the, the things that is well, well, I guess we'll get to the next one, almost always true, uh, is that <coughs> veins always are returning blood to the heart. Veins are always returning blood to the heart. And arteries are always taking blood away from the heart. That is always true. Veins are usually colored blue because they usually carry low oxygenated blood, but not always. The exception to the rule would be the pulmonary veins. 
So you'll notice here that they're red. That's because they have high oxygen. But they're still veins because they're returning blood back to the heart. You'll also notice <coughs> that arteries are usually colored red. The exception to the rule is the pulmonary artery, which is colored blue because it has low oxygenated blood but it is still an artery because it's carrying blood away from the heart. Now let's take a look at the ventricles. The ventricles uh, make up most of the mass of the heart, as I said before, and their main role is to pump blood out of the heart to all of the tissues of the body. So if we start with the right ventricle, the blood is pumped into the pulmonary trunk where it then gets moved into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. The left pulmonary artery goes to the left lung and the right pulmonary artery goes to the right lung. So I'll just say lungs. Where the blood picks up oxygen gets rid of the CO2, and then enters, goes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. All right, V for veins, back to the heart. From the left ventricle, the blood is pumped into the aorta, and from the aorta, it's pumped out to all the tissues of the body. So what happens is the aorta splits, and then splits, and splits, and splits until it goes to all the different tissues of the body. So again, remember that veins always return blood to the heart. That's always true of veins. And what's always true of arteries is they always carry blood away from the heart. And again, veins usually have low oxygenated blood. Arteries usually have highly oxygenated blood. And the exception to the rule is the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins. Okay, this is just a uh, frontal section. It's an anterior view of the heart. And you can see a couple of things that you're going to see next week when you do your, your dissection. First, this is the right, right here is the right ventricle. And between the right atrium and right ventricle, there's a valve called the tricuspid valve because it has three flaps. And coming down from the tricuspid valve are these white cords called chordae tendinae. They attach to the papillary muscles, which are these finger-like projections. You can see them on this side also. On the left side of the heart, the valve between the left atrium and left ventricle is called the tricuspid valve. And here, you can only see the chordae tendinae. You can't see the tricuspid valve. It's also called the mitral valve. But you have a pretty good look at the papillary muscle here. One thing I want to point out is the thickness of the myocardium in the left and right ventricles. So from here to here, this is how thick the myocardium is in the left ventricle. If you look over here, from here to here, that's how thick the myocardium is in the right ventricle. So the left ventricle has a much thicker myocardium, and that's because it's got to pump the blood up through the aorta and then out to all the tissues of the body. And as it's pumping the blood, it meets more and more resistance or friction. So it has to have a lot more muscle to produce a lot more force. The right ventricle is only pumping the blood to the lungs, which is a pretty short distance so it really doesn't need to have a lot of muscle. So you can think of the heart as being broken into two pathways, or two roots. One is called the pulmonary circuit, and the other is called the systemic circuit. The pulmonary circuit is considered to be the right side of the heart. So everything you see here in blue makes up the pulmonary circuit, and it includes the pulmonary arteries, the inferior and superior vena cava, the right atrium, and the right ventricle. And so this is what makes up the pulmonary circuit.
you'll notice that in the pulmonary circuit, there is fairly high level of oxygen is indicated by, sorry, fairly high level of carbon dioxide is indicated by the blue color and um, low levels of oxygen. The pulmonary circuit on the right side, sorry, the, the systemic circuit on the right side of the, of, on the left side of the heart is made up of the pulmonary veins, the aorta, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So let's take a look here for a minute at the roles of these two circuits. The role of the pulmonary circuit is to carry the blood to the lungs where gas exchange occurs. The pathway is from the right atrium to the tricuspid valve through the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary arteries, the right and left pulmonary arteries, and then to the lungs. So you should learn this pathway and actually be able to, um, to go through the, this pathway without looking at a picture. So let's look at the, this pathway again. So again, the pulmonary circuit, we can think of it, um, we'll start with the right atrium through the right ventricle, up through the pulmonary trunk, and out through the left, right and left pulmonary arteries <coughs> to the lungs. The purpose of the systemic circuit is to pump oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart to the body tissues. So again, the purpose is to pump oxygenated blood sorry, to the tissues of the body. The pathway that it takes is from the lungs to the pulmonary veins, I'm just going to write V, to the left atrium, through the bicuspid valve, to the left ventricle, through the aortic semilunar valve, through the aorta, to all the tissues of the body, except for the lung. So again, those are the two circuits. All right, next what we're going to talk about is coronary circulation. And what this is, is the blood supply to the myocardium itself. So the myocardium is made up of cardiac muscle cells, and they need oxygen and nutrients also, and they also need to remove CO2 and wastes. So they have their own arterial blood supply and their own set of veins. <laughs> The arterial supply has many anastomoses. Anastomoses is when a blood vessel diverges and splits and splits and splits into smaller blood vessels that then plunge into the tissue. The purpose for this is that if one component of the blood vessel is blocked, there's another one still going to the tissue. And you often find arterial anastomoses in places where it's critical that the blood reach its target. So this is a picture, an anterior view of the coronary arteries of the heart. And you'll notice that um, <laughs> at the base of the aorta, so here's the aorta right here, right down here at the base, the first two blood vessels that come off the aorta are actually the left and right coronary arteries. So this is very hard to see on the cat, but you can see it on the model, on the sheep heart, I'm sorry, you can see it on the model. The left coronary artery supplies most of the left myocardium with oxygen and nutrients, and the right coronary artery supplies most of the right side of the heart with oxygen and nutrients. You'll notice that um, the right and left coronary artery split right away. So the left coronary artery splits into the circumflex artery and the anterior interventricular artery. As soon as an artery or any blood vessel splits, it has a new name. For the lab exam, you'll need to know just the left and right coronary arteries. Um, but you should take a look and try to get a little bit familiar with some of these other arteries. Sometimes you can tell where they're located just by their name. So for example, anterior interventricular. Remember that the word inter means between. 
two things so in